have a photo? Uh, Me and you and Sam and Bill? Come on. Let's go, Bill. Yeah. Watch out for the pram. Yeah. Yeah. Phillips, co-author of Lou Richards' autobiography, My Wonderful Life. You wrote the book with the wonderful Lou himself. How, how long did it take to create the book? Um, about uh, eight weeks. Eight weeks? Hmm. I'm a fast typer. <laughs> did Lou uh, have notes for you to take uh, down from? None. None? <laughs> None. Not one note. And uh, I said to him, Louis, I said, we, we need photos. He said, yeah, 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 I'll do the photos. So anyway, um, we scrounged around and found about 20 photos and um, begged, borrowed and stole them. And uh, anyway, the book came out and I was over at his place having a, a beer one afternoon. And I said, what's that in the drawer there? And he opened the drawer and there were about 5,000 photos. <laughs> uh, he, oh, he said, I forgot about those. So, but he's been, um, his memory, his memory's not as good today as it was obviously 1989 when we first we wrote The Kiss of Death, but um, there were so many more things that we wanted to put in the book. You know, like, you know, there was another 23 years of his life and... Uh, so there could be a second autobiography to come out? I can assure you categorically on my dog's grave there will be no follow-up. This no, is it. Right. Lou's wonderful life ends today. Ends today, and he's, uh, you mentioned his memory slowed up a bit. Obviously, his speech has slowed up a bit more. Oh. So, those meetings that you must have had with him must have been slow processes. Um, he's 89. The majority of the book, obviously, we wrote some years ago. But the top up, um, I used a lot of his friends and and Lou and Ian Johnson, um, who was the boss at Channel Nine, Harvey Silver, Sam, you know, Eddie Maguire, lots of people. They they knew the stories. Um, Billy Brownless, we were just chatting a second ago, and he was talking about uh, Lou on air and how irreverent he was in the latter days at Channel Nine. And a guest was leaving, and they said, Lou, we've got to um, got to close the show down now. And Lou said, Good, you can all. Off, and uh, um, that went to air on Channel Nine, but no one seemed to notice it because they couldn't understand. He was a bit garbled. Mm, yes. Uh, your first memory of Lou when you oh. first met him? What did you first think of him? Oh, I'd, I'd left school. Um, I was 18 years old. I worked at the Herald Sun as a, as a cadet reporter, and at six o'clock at night, we would be sent across the road to the Phoenix Hotel, which was owned by Lou, and uh, we would have the spaghetti bolognese, which was 25 cents, and Lou would serve that frequently, or come into the little tiny dining room where all the, um, the journos from the Herald Sun would be sitting. Um, the kids who were cadets, 25 cents was a significant amount. You could have the 45 cent meal, or if you were really going well, you could have the 75 cent rabbit. <laughs> the whole rabbit for 75 cents and then you'd go and have a drink in the bar and Lou would be there and there might be Norm Smith or Murray Wiedemann or you know all the greats of the day used to congregate at the pub. Now do you remember watching Lou in his playing days for Collingwood? You must have, you would have seen him. What was, what was your favourite? I was 1955, I was three. Well okay, okay. right. Okay. Thanks for that. You, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Did you watch him? No, 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 uh, no, 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 it's a long way before my yeah. time. You feel, I must have heard some wonderful memories from oh. Ed and from Sam and from Gary. Look, I worked, I was producer on World of Sport and I hosted World of Sport. I worked with Lou for the best part of 20 years, more than 20 years. Um, we know each other. I know, look, I could sit down and write the book without talking to him. In fact, I did a bit of that. But um, all the stories with Max Walker and things like that are actually 100% sort of true. Sort of true? Yeah. They've been embellished over the years, but that's Lou, that's Max, and, uh, you know, they know how to play to an audience. It was interesting today, when the cameras turned on, Lou didn't want to talk. When the cameras came on and the red light appeared, Lou was up there bright as a button, and uh, and he's and it's an it's an honour that um, Billy Brownless and Gary Lyon and Sam Newman and Eddie and Murray Wiedemann would give up their time to come along and talk about their old mate. It was fantastic. Well, I think they do anything to talk about Lou Richards. I mean, even at the age of 89, he's still managing to get a word into the press. No, he will continue until they plant grass. Now, Lou, in his right state of mind, I know he's 89 now and his memory's sort of you know, here and there. Has he managed to read the book? Yeah, yeah, naturally. And I read him the last chapter right. because... Um, and he, he said, bloody short book. <laughs> I said, Lou... <laughs> I said, this chapter has been added on, to, and we'd done some other work on the book, and Eddie did a forward and things like that. But he certainly, he certainly read the book. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely fantastic. Look, it's a fantastic event. We all remember Lou Richards. I mean, you've done a wonderful job co-authoring the book. Um, the book's on sale now at favourite bookstores? Everywhere. 
everywhere. It's walking out of the shops. Um, I was talking to the publisher, Jeff Slattery, and he said it's beyond their wildest dreams. Bill Brownless, uh, former Geelong superstar, and he's still a superstar down at the Geelong Footy Club. Bill, your favourite memory of Lou Richards? Oh, look, there's a lot of uh, favourite memories. And uh, growing up in the country town and used to uh, watch Lou on, on World of Sport or read him in the papers, it was just an unbelievable name. And then to come down and meet him, and the first time you met him, you thought, Jesus, how small is he? You know, he's just a little fella. But uh, just working with him over the years on TV and... He was just a true professional. He wouldn't say much during the ad breaks. He might have a go at you for something. And then as soon as the red light went on, bang, he was away. And uh, it's a bit like Sam Newman. He did it today. As yeah. soon as that red light came yeah. on, he was talking that, to the press. And that's him. That is Lou. That's the best way to sum him up. And he wouldn't give you a lot of credit, but uh, it was just a pleasure to work with him and have a lot of fun with him. And, you know, I'm not, I sat up there on stage. I bowled him over one day with a stupid puppet in his face. And that really hurt him. And we are in a bit of trouble there. I had to ring his family and just see how he was. And I think Channel 9 sent out a, uh, a recliner for him so he could uh, smooth things over there so and things like that. But, you know, we still do the Lou Richards handball on the Sunday footy show. Uh, we still have the Lou Richards medal. So his name is just, you know, it still goes on and he's, he's just a superstar. Surprising Gary Lockhart. I was about growing up in Kyabra and yeah. Lou was everywhere on the radio yeah. and the TV and he sort of still is. Well, he, he still is and everyone knows his name, doesn't they? Everyone knows who Lou Richards is. It's unbelievable. And whether that's, uh, you know, obviously as a great footballer and I didn't see him play football, but he's one of the few that have gone on and become bigger than what he was as a footballer. A bit like Jimmy Steins, I reckon. You know, Jimmy Steins was a great footballer and won a Brownlow medal. But his work off the footy field... Well, that's probably Lou. He, he started all, um, you know, all the media, but also started sportsman's nights. Him and Jack Dyer were the first ones that would go out to the country and do these nights. And as Sam Newman would say, the first question he'd ask the people in these uh, sportsman's nights, where's the money? You know, and he'd get that up front and they do have a great night. They raise money for the, for the footy club. So he started all that too. You mentioned something about those bacon and egg sandwiches. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that again? Oh, well, we used to... Um, Every Sunday morning for the Sunday before the Sunday morning footy show, they bring in some coffee and bacon and egg sandwiches. And Lou uh, was getting on a bit towards, you know, this is only, what, 10 years ago or, or whatever. And he, he used to, you'd hear him come in because he'd, he'd shuffle his feet and he'd walk in, he'd sit down and he'd grab one of the bacon and egg sandwiches and you'd just go, oh no, please, Lou, get through this bacon and egg sandwich because <laughs> he would start eating it. The egg was all right, but the bacon used to be a bit long. And he'd nearly fear to come choke. And you'd just be watching him. He'd go, <coughs> mate, and you'd have to whack him on the back a couple of times. And then he'd spit it out. And Oh, mate, it was, it was unbelievable. He'd do it every week, every Sunday. And you'd think, I'm going to have to save his life here one, at one stage. It was fantastic. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. Now, you've got your own copy of the book now, Lou Richards. Yeah. Have you begun reading the book? Well, I'm not a big book reader. I Why not? Well, I just oh, I can read the newspaper back to front, front to back. But I've, I haven't read a book for years. Uh, the Kill a Mockingbird, maybe, in HSC was my last book. So I'm not a book reader. I, I like the pictures. So I had a good look at the pictures, flick through them. And, and it reminds you of some of those dares he used to do. He used to have these dares back in the good old days. And I know down at Geelong they still talk about when he got in a bathtub and rode Billy Goggin across the Barwon River because he lost a bets about Geelong. Mm. And there was the biggest crowd they've ever seen down at the Barwon River to watch him row Billy Goggin across the river. So he used to do things like that too, you know. No, absolutely fantastic. He's led an incredible life. Uh, it's interesting that when he was uh, back in his days at Collingwood, he was known as the King, mm. and they still refer to him as the King. Well, he's a little king. He's only a little, little fella, let me tell you. So he's a little king, but, but you've got to have people like that, you know, for people to look up to. And, and when you think of Collingwood, you think of Lou Richards, and, and that's what it's all about. That's it's like Bob Davis at Geelong and Jack Dyer at Richmond. You know, you, we've still got to hold on to these uh, blokes that have made the game, that are fabric of the clubs. They're just superstars, and, and that's what makes footy clubs, you know. And, who knows, I'll be talking about it in years, about uh, Cameron Ling or Tom Harley who won a first premiership at Geelong and things like that. But we need these old people around. And you've still got the Lou Richards handball on the Sunday footy yeah. show, as you mentioned. Yeah. You know, they thank Lou Richards. And all. Does, he, does he come along? Does he turn up no, at the event? but we spoke to him today and he said he might pop in, which would be interesting because knowing Lou, he'd just bowl into the set, yeah. take over as he does and probably drop the magic word. So uh, that's what we... But, yeah, we still say good day to Lou and, uh, on every Sunday and how's the medal. So, no, he's a great man and, and all the best to him. You just watch out the next time he comes along. He might be expecting some more of those bacon and egg sandwiches. Oh, no, he's not eating them. We'll keep them away from him. Don't worry about that. Oh, yes. No, Bill, it's been great having a chat. We know that Lou's an incredible man. You, too, are an incredible man yourself, mate. And, uh, yeah... 
yeah. try and read that no, book in the near future. You're probably right there. Thanks. Harry Wiedemann, a former premiership player at Collingwood, playing alongside the great Lou Richards himself. We're at the auto, well, at the launch of Lou Richards' autobiography today. Mary, playing alongside such an incredible, I mean, you must have some you know, fantastic memories left. Yeah, the, well, there's plenty of memories, I suppose. The greatest memory of the 53 grand final. Uh, uh, I don't think we were favourites to win it. But uh, we, we did win it. We won it by two goals. And uh, Lou was a, a leader. Uh, he, he captain of Collingwood since 19, say, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. And then he retired in 55. But he was just one of those great leaders of the Collingwood Football Club. If you look back over the years, if you look at your Bobby Roses, Neil Mann, who was vice captain in 1953, Lou's just one of those great characters that uh, he lived and died for Collingwood. His memory's going a bit slow these days, so is his speech, but I was talking to Bill Brownless a couple of minutes ago, and it's amazing that when those red lights are off on the cameras, he doesn't like to talk, but when they, as soon as they come on, He's in front he's, of the press. That's, well, he's a media man. If you can go back to him and uh, Dyer and uh, Bobby Davis when they run their shows on the Thursday night with the teams, giving the teams out and all that. They, he, he was just a really born character and he's, his wit was so quick. He could tell a joke and he'd get the people to laugh and all that. But he, he's just one of those great characters of life. And you, you know, as you say, Lou is lo losing the plot now, but... He's 91, and I suppose I only hope I don't lose as much as that. But that's old age, and we've we got to put up with that. You've received a copy of the book. Here it is. I told you I, told you I was going to show you earlier. Lou Richards, The Autobiography, My Wonderful Life. Go and get a copy. It's a fantastic read. Are you, are you a book ready? Are you going to sit no, down and I, have a look? No, I, I'll read this. This, this. this is about my size. I don't like reading big books, but I've read the, the Bobby Neither Rose, of us the Roses um, the, book I read I read that I read a couple of books in my life but as a kid I had more to I had, I played football and all sports and I didn't have time to be reading books but I I, I wish I had have done it now but read books but it, I just I was more interested in sport than reading books. Now you were a champion player in your game having not been playing for a few years now or well, quite a few years yeah. do you sit back and still follow it? Yes, I'll be here on Friday night. Um, go Hawks. Yeah, go Hawks, go Collingwood. <laughs> yeah, well, it did. yeah I, we, we're struggling a bit at the moment. We got to, I, I, my belief is that we've got to have two Ruckman. You just can't go into finals these days with uh, Jolly. I think we've got to get another Ruckman. And at the moment, we haven't got one. Now, whether uh, Jolly can do the whole rucking for the whole game, that's another thing. I think we've got the quick blokes around the ground. I think we're a fair side, but Hawthorne are going to be the side to beat. They're a pretty good side. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, the 1953 grand final that you took part in with Lou, the man himself. Do you remember Lou's reaction after the grand final? No, I don't, because in those days, when the siren went, everyone ran on the ground. <laughs> so you couldn't yeah. move. And I, I've got a photo at home where the, the whole crowd took over the whole oval here at the MCG. And uh, you can see my, because I was six foot two then, in those days, you can see my head above the crowd. and. Uh, Lou, who was only about that five foot six, five foot seven, you couldn't see. But in those days, they don't allow the crowds to run on a day. But there was no presentations in our day after the games. You came off the ground into the rooms. Normally, the opposition coach came in and said congratulations, and um, then we got we'd go to a show that night, and then you'd get an ashtray with a little gold medal sitting on in about two weeks' time, and that, that's all that ever happened. If I was going to ask you for your, you must have many favourite memories of Lou, but you, the, the top one, the one at the top of the ladder, most favourite memory of Lou Richards, well, what would it be? Uh, well, you've got to consider we didn't, we hadn't won a premiership since, a premiership since 1936. Now, that was 17 years to the 53. So I've got to say that when they carried Lou off, I think that was the, the, the ultimate of, of of that day when the players carried Lou off and he was there waving because he, he probably knew he was getting, he started in 1941 he was getting near the end of his career and I think I think that was the uh, the ultimate if I got to say that.